Previously using a 100 ton hydraulic press, we tried to press coal and graphite into a diamond state. But unfortunately, we failed. And in the comments, I'm often asked to try this experiment using a 500 ton hydraulic press. Let's first understand how possible this is. For creating a diamond, graphite is better suited because the carbon content in it approaches 100%. The transformation of graphite into a diamond occurs at a pressure of 50,000 atmospheres and a temperature of over 1,000 degrees. When we tried to compress graphite in the cylinder using a 100-ton press, we managed to achieve a pressure of only 15,000 atmospheres, which is three times less than required. In our case, the pressure inside this vessel is equal to the force of the press multiplied by the area of the piston. To achieve a pressure of 50,000 atmospheres in this cylinder, it would require an effort of 350 tons. Yes, of course, such force is achievable with a 500-ton hydraulic press. The smaller the piston, the less force is required to achieve the same pressure. For example, for a piston of this diameter, to achieve a pressure of 50,000 atmospheres, it is enough to apply a force of only 96 tons. And for pistons with a diameter of 1 centimeter, it is enough to apply a force of 40 tons. Well, again, the question of the strength of the piston material is acute. It's time to move on to the practical part. First in line will be a vessel with a piston diameter of just over 15 millimeters. The piston material is steel 45 hardened to 40 units on the Rockwell scale. I wonder what load this whole structure will withstand. The maximum load at which the piston deformed was 40 tons. That is, the pressure inside this vessel was about 20,000 atmospheres, which is twice less than required. The piston was crushed and got stuck inside the cylinder. And the graphite was compressed into this black tablet. Now we will try to extract graphite from there and examine it in more detail, for the presence of diamonds, of course. Well, at first glance, it doesn't smell like diamonds here, and at the second glance, and a third glance too. We will continue the experiment. The piston of the second vessel is made of high-speed steel R6M5K5. This is perhaps one of the hardest steels, if not the hardest. Hardness over 60 units on the Rockwell scale. The piston diameter is slightly less than 10 millimeters. The required pressure of 50,000 atmospheres in this vessel is already achievable at a load of 40 tons.
The maximum load at which the piston was destroyed was 30 tons. The calculated pressure inside the vessel was no more than 40,000 atmospheres. Which is already not bad. We at least somehow approached the mark of 50,000. As you can notice from this experiment, the strength and hardness of the top steel is not enough to achieve the required pressure. And we still haven't taken into account that all this should be heated to 1000 degrees minimum. We remember how steel behaves at a temperature around 1000 degrees. It becomes slightly harder than plasticine. But we have an ace in the hole. What if the piston is made of the hardest metal alloy, tungsten carbide? Tungsten carbide can withstand the required load. Unfortunately, this piston is not of a round shape, but in the shape of some kind of truncated ellipse. I couldn't find a round one, unfortunately. Due to the strange shape, the gap between the cylinder walls and the piston will be larger than in the previous experiments. But in essence, the cylinder itself acts as a vector here, since no seals will withstand such pressure. But theoretically, the maximum pressure should still be created at some point in the graphite. And in this experiment, using a tungsten carbide piston, we'll then try to achieve the required temperature. We will connect the upper and lower part of our device through copper electrodes to a wielding transformer, on which the maximum current will be set, 170 amperes. When the press starts pressing on the piston, the pressure in the vessel will begin to increase. We will turn on the wielding transformer and hope that an electric arc will appear inside. During arc wielding, the temperature of the arc is over 2000 degrees. So, if all goes well, we will have more than a two-fold temperature reserve. When the press developed efforts of 60 tons, we turned on the wielding transformer and after a second, our circuit breakers were tripped. The light went out, but the press continues to hold this load. Within a couple of seconds, the light appears, the wielding transformer turns on, and the press finally destroys the tungsten carbide piston. According to calculations, we achieved a pressure inside this vessel of about 70,000 atmospheres, against the required 50,000. And whether any heating occurred there, whether an electric arc passed through, who the hell knows. A dent like this pressed into the lower base made of hardened steel and there are fragments of crushed tungsten carbide in the upper punch of the press. I assume that due to the gaps between the cylinder and the piston, the graphite would escape into the gaps, and the piston would simply hit the lower part of the press. But no, the space here is still filled with graphite. I was eagerly digging out this graphite and really got scared at this moment. Did 
Did you snort diamonds? They're nowhere to be seen here for now. And here's a mess that turned out on the steel base of the press. A mixture of pressed graphite and crushed tungsten carbide. We will dig out these parts of graphite and add them to the general mass and try to examine everything in more detail. Now we can see the dent that remained from the graphite in more detail. I don't know what the temperature was inside the vessel, but it was definitely high outside. This is evidenced by the blackened and in some places melted copper wires. I just couldn't figure out how to take a closer look at all this. Nothing is visible to the naked eye here, just black graphite. But then the cat gave me some advice. When I heard the cat mewing, I remembered that I have macro rings for the camera lens, which in essence turned the camera into some kind of microscope. Let's try to examine these three piles of graphite in more detail using magnification. This is what the graphite looks like after the first experiment, where the pressure was 20,000 atmospheres. Besides large pieces of graphite, nothing else is visible. And here are how much smaller pieces of graphite were obtained as a result of the second experiment, where the pressure was 40,000 atmospheres. I have no idea what a diamond obtained from graphite as a result of its pressing should look like, Therefore, I didn't pay attention to some inclusions right here. There were a few of them and they stood out from the general mass. By the way, this is what a piece of copper wire looks like. But when I looked at a handful of graphite after the third experiment with tungsten carbide, I realized what a diamond obtained from graphite looks like. These barely noticeable yellow inclusions are nothing more than diamonds that we really managed to extract using a hydraulic press, a wielding transformer, and some luck. Most of these fasteners have such an elongated shape. I don't know, but I assume that the electric arc, as a result of our experiment, still passed inside. The appearance of these small diamonds in a handful after the second experiment can be explained by the fact that I slightly overdid it. I slightly poured graphite from the third handful into the second. And here you can see a piece of melted copper wire. And by the way, copper melts at a temperature of over 900 degrees. I'm honestly in shock from this experiment. Who would have thought that you can create diamonds yourself? Of course, the cost of this method of obtaining is questionable. Since in this case, we used a 500 ton hydraulic press. The cost of a new such press is about $100,000. And our diamonds here turned out, let's say not the largest ones ever. The diamonds turned out to be so small that I can only see them through this microscope, so to speak. They're not noticeable with the naked eye in this black pile of graphite. And these are yellow industrial diamonds. Their cost is slightly less than of natural diamonds. By the way, about a year ago, we tested technical yellow diamonds for strength with a hydraulic press. I accidentally managed to hook one of the largest pieces with the needle right here. Now, let's try to measure its size with a micrometer. The 
size of this piece right here is 15 hundredths of a millimeter, which is slightly thicker than a human hair and is comparable to the thickness of an ordinary sheet of paper. And the cost of such diamonds, let's say of this size, is not very high. Write in the comments where, in your opinion, such diamonds could be actually used. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss any new interesting videos.